Hey guys, Mr. BXRP here and welcome back. Uh, today's going to be a very different video. Um, I am literally buried in paperwork here at my office uh, with everything that's going on with the current event and filling out forms for the SBA um, and different associations for my company. But I did want to touch base with everyone about forbearance because I know a lot of people are going to be talking to their mortgage companies about forbearance for their mortgages. And I just want to give you guys um, some tips and, and potentially some warnings about it. So, so let me give you an example of what a forbearance is and then and then what you need to look for, okay? So, so Jimmy wants to ask his mortgage company for a forbearance because he can't afford his mortgage today. So Jimmy calls his mortgage company and um, and after he gets laid off or or you know for whatever reason it is or can't can't afford it because his hours have been reduced. And on the phone, his mortgage company says they'll give him six months off of paying his mortgage. So that's great. Jimmy feels a sense of relief and goes about his business. Six months later, um, he calls his mortgage company and says, okay, it's been six months. I can start paying my mortgage again. Well, you know, assuming Jimmy's mortgage was, let's say, $1,500, um, they will, the bank will then say, okay, well, send us a check for $9,000 and then you can start making your mortgage payment again. And Jimmy says, well, what do you mean send you a check for $9,000? And, and they'll tell him, well, the forbearance was for six months and now he's got to pay that plus the current amount. So once Jimmy explains that he can't afford that, what will be the next option from the bank? Well, the bank will say, okay, we'll just spread out the $9,000 over the next uh, 12 months. So we'll increase your mortgage from $1,500 to 2250, which is still not a possibility for Jimmy to pay because he just got back to work. Not only was he, does, does he not have the additional funds to pay the mortgage, he didn't save any money during that hard time period. Um, so then finally he asked, well, can I refinance the loan? And the banker says, uh, the bank representative will then tell him, no, you can't because you were in forbearance. So don't get caught in this forbearance thing. My, my advice to you guys is this, is if you ask for a forbearance from your bank, um, you may only want to accept it if they can put the payment and the interest on the back end of the loan, which means... If you have, you know, a thirty-year mortgage, it's at the end. So, so have them added on to the end. So, be careful. I'm only doing this video to warn you guys to be careful, okay? Because you don't want to get stuck in a situation to, be, you know, essentially what ends up happening to most people is they end up kicking the can down the road, and instead of losing their houses in ninety days, they lose their house in in six months or a year. You don't want that to happen. So. If you're gonna ask for your bank for a forbearance, have them put it on the back end if you can. If you can't, you're gonna to have to figure out something else. But don't think kicking the can down the road is the answer because they may shock you in three months or six months when they try and have you pay the entire amount or increase your payment. So be sure you know what you're getting into before you get into it. I hope this was helpful. Like I said, I'm gonna be out for a few days handling paperwork. Um, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not an accountant, and, and, and I'm not a mortgage forbearance expert. You know, this was intended for, for educational purposes only for you guys. You need to decide what's best for you, talk to the experts in your life, but I just wanted to warn you of the pitfalls that you might find, and I hope everybody's staying healthy and be well. Thank you. Bye-bye.